The Anti Show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. These are the voyages of the GNT Show. Our continued mission to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to Boliga, where no show has gone before. Live long and prosper, bitches. Convention News. Stefan and Gabrielle, we are here at the city on the edge of forever. Uh, and this is an audio book of the new book that our, uh, Harlan Ellison completed not too long ago, correct? Well, actually, the book's been out for a while. Um, uh, two years ago, they did a graphic novel of it. And then Harlan came to us uh, a year or so ago and mentioned that he really wanted to get this on audio, too. This is a, a real big treat for our listeners because many of our listeners are audio drama uh, enthusiasts and audio book enthusiasts. So um, the novel that came out from Harlan, um, what can our listeners expect from the production? Uh, something very different. <laughs> we have the original teleplay, the one that won the Writers Guild Award in 1966. And that is, of course, the centerpiece. Uh, it's fully dramatized, full cast, including people like LeVar Burton, um, David Gerald, uh, John Rubenstein, Scott Brick, some, some superstars of the audiobook world, uh, as well as Star Trek world. Um, so that is the centerpiece. It is the full teleplay as he wrote it, including the camera directions, because... You know, that's not usually done, but Harlan is such a writer that even the directions are amazing and, and give you so much more of a sense of what he's trying to say with this piece. Uh, so that's, that's the main centerpiece. There, there's also a couple of treatments uh, that, that he wrote there. Um, he was asked to do a rewrite, and he did the prologue and the first act as, as a rewrite. That's in there also fully dramatized. Um, then there is a lengthy essay of his, read by him, uh, in which he describes the genesis of the project, the, the, the world into which he wrote it. Remember that this was written before any episodes had aired. Right. Um, and the controversy surrounding it. Right. Uh, and he goes, uh, he goes very passionate about it. We all know that he is not one to hold his mind. <laughs> and we have, that's why we all love him. <laughs> so um, what is it that you love most personally about this project? It is such a beautiful piece of science fiction writing on its own. Um, I had the honor of directing the piece. And the day that... Every, my favorite thing was the day that everyone came in uh, and read. It, you know, we were on a very low budget. We had to do it in one day wow. um, because we had no funding at this point. We later kickstarted it, and the fans came out of the walls and supported us. But at the time, there was a lot of pressure to get this done in one day. Th these weren't people that could come back and do pickups or redos. And I tell you, it was a magic day. You had people like LeVar Burton, David Gerald coming in, sitting down, chatting. They were all signing each other's scripts like yearbooks. Um, I still get goosebumps. It, it, was, it was magic, and they all to tribute to Harlan's writing. And oh, what an amazing experience. But as the director of the project, can you tell our listeners, again, who are all very much so uh, enthusiasts of this kind of production, you know, what it takes to tell a story orally versus written? What it takes to what? Tell the story orally. What kind of special um, or, or, or energies does it take? What, what challenges did you face the most that day? My job is to channel the author's intent and to get the actors to midwife the story for the author. So to support it, but without getting in the way of their own personal interpretations. Now, we're dealing with... <laughs> 
such professionals here that, and such strong writing, you know, that that's why it was so, so magical that day. I was a witness to it more than a director. I mean, I wasn't stopping and telling people how to say lines. It just flowed. When you combine the kind of writing that Harlan does, which is unique and genius, as far as I'm concerned, and talents of the level of LeVar Burton, um, you don't have much to do. I just sat there in a candy store, you know. Um, and also... As I said earlier, the, this writing stands on its own. Um, I would love to make the film of this version. It would be contemporary to today. There are issues in it. Uh, he has an, an orator who stands up and talks about immigration and barring people from coming into the country based on religion. This is in 66, set in 1933. So it is timeless. It is timeless. And that's the reason why it continuously becomes, and as stated, as even in, even in the, in the, um, in the I don't want to say the state that it was, but even in the um, the scripted version for this for the television show, it still remains yeah. one of the most yes, popular is. popular episodes ever. Um, it's kind of wonderful that both of these versions can coexist in our universe. I think the fans would thoroughly agree with you. Um, we it, there's no such thing as not there's no such thing as too much when it comes to a Trek fan. Um, what is it about this? Um, no, I want to make sure that all of our listeners have the ability to access and to obtain a copy of this. Where can they find it? Uh, they can get a download direct from our website, which is skyboatmedia.com. We will make sure that this link, and if you're listening to this, listeners, just look down below your player and that link will be in the show notes. Right, Gabrielle and Stefan, I want to say thank you so much for having us over to let us talk about Harlan's um, just amazing career and just this one piece of work that continues to um, shine. So thank, thank you again. Thank you so much. You've been very gracious. We appreciate it. Thank you. Very Have good. a great day. Live long and prosper. Music for the GNT Show is provided by Five Year Mission, Enterprise Blues Band, Warp 11, Andrew Allen, and Greth Thor. The GNT Show is a BLB production. Move ahead, walk back to 10. Put a mini skirt on my own man. Represent the human race And we make this A happy place To fully go where no man's gone before I think I sang that line once before But I'm not too sure We'll be so happy, can't you see A zero G Some cream.